Introducing the revolutionary AI image and video creation process that combines cutting-edge technology and seamless comfy UI workflow by using Olama with large language models and stable diffusion in comfy UI. You can now generate stunning visuals, immersive animations, and engaging stories all in one streamlined workflow. With Olama and all open source large language models, you can now bring your ideas to life like never before. Say goodbye to complicated steps using multiple tools, copy and paste your storyline like what other videos show you. With Olama and Stable Diffusion, you can simply input your text, generate the image, and pass it to Stable Video Diffusion to create animation video easily. Plus, for beginners, why still need this kind of prompts PDF in Etsy if large language models can help you to generate image prompts? Let's check it out. The streamlined workflow that save your time without you manually convert contents into prompts. Hello everyone. Here's another cool custom node called if prompt to prompt or comfy ui if ai tools you can download it in the comfy ui manager by clicking on the list and searching for this name additionally you can go to the github page to download it and find more information about this custom node so what does this custom node do it connects with local large language models that are set up via olama and generates prompts for stable diffusion style of prompt for image generation to use this custom node, you need to have Olama set up on your local machine. Run Olama and download any large language models that you want to work with. During the installation, you will be instructed to integrate Olama in a specific way. I also have an Olama installation setup guide for Windows in my LLM channel. The link is provided in the description below. In the custom node folder, you'll find pre-created workflow templates for you to try out. Once you download this custom node in the custom node workflow folder, you'll have a workflow JSON file to get started. I have improved the layout and made it workable for other large language models, combining text to image, image to image, and even video animation with stable video diffusion. After installing this custom node and setting up Olama, how do you get started? First of all, restart your comfy UI and open another CMD window for the Olama command prompt. In the CMD window, type Olama serve and press enter. This will boot up Olama from the back end. Then you can return to comfy UI, the workflow diagram interface. Click the refresh button to let the IFAI tools detect the Olama connection. Once detected, the model drop-down menu for selecting LLM models will show a list of available models in your Olama setup. As you can see, there are already two API requests from Comfy UI to the Olama backend server. Here, I have three large language models downloaded on my local machine. Llama 2, Java, and Mistral. Mistral is particularly good at handling general stuff and outperforms a Llama 2. So I'm going to use Mistral for LLM prompts for my request, where I'll input any text content and generate positive and negative text prompts for stable diffusion. Then I'll connect the generated string to the conditions in the stable diffusions text to image generation. To make it easier to recognize, I'll create groups for the stable diffusion part. For generating the stable diffusion image, I'll use the SDXL Juggernaut XL checkpoint model. It will connect to both the clip text node and the large language models that read through your prompt or questions. Lava model has clip vision's ability to create stable diffusions text prompts through the image and it will pass that text string to the conditioning of the stable diffusion group. Now, what's the difference between this and the IP adapter clip visions? I'll talk about that later in these videos. First of all, this provides an intuitive way for you to ask questions about the image you load in here. For example, I'll ask the question, what is this? And write a prompt for SDXL image generations. 
This will generate the stable diffusions text prompt styles text strength and pass it to positive and negative prompts. Let's try it once and you'll understand what's going on. Here's Olama. The Olama backend is running through the API connections with ComfyUI. The data communication happens between the backend and ComfyUI. Now we have the image displayed. Lava is a large language model for vision assistance. It can read and process images using GPT manners models. It's similar to GPT-4, where you can upload an image and ask the AI models to identify what elements are present in the image. And this custom node, if image to prompt, specifically works with large language models and transforms the responses into stable diffusions, text prompts. So right here, as you can see, the text prompt in the show text is describing the loaded image. What is that in there? And as you can see, the image from the generate result is in different styles. But then all the elements they have are the same. So in this example, for example here, we have the futuristic environments with scientists controlling computers. Let's check out this image. This is another similar image as well. So this text prompt is updated and as you can see, the image shows a person sitting at a computer with multiple monitors. The individuals appear to be engaged in some sort of digital work or gaming, indicating a keyboard and mouse in front of them. So it is able to read through the image to identify what is in the image using the model Liava. And it is a really handy large language model that you can install locally on your machines. And these custom nodes also enable you to generate different styles of images. For example, we have photography or futuristic styles or neon palm. Look at this one. This is the minimalistic style image that has just been generated. So right here, we have another style as well. Let's try something like neon pong. In neon pong, there will be some purple and paint colored lightning backgrounds appearing in the image, giving it a cyberpunk style. Yeah, so there you have it. This is the neon punk style image that gathers the text from the Java large language model, understands the text, and generates the description as a stable diffusion text prompt through the stable diffusions text to image group, resulting in the generated image here. And this is quite different. As you can see, the text prompt is passed through the stable diffusions command prompt as well. One thing that is very different from this compared to the IP adapter is that this allows you to generate totally different styles of images and characters. Everything is different. Let's create an IP adapter group here so that we can try using the same image and load it into the same SDXL checkpoint model. We can try that with this IP adapter loader. Let's load the image here. I'm going to use the same image, so I'll copy this file name Actually, I can just follow this file name to search for it in the load image here. The 3PNG, that's the one. So there we go. We have the same image that we just loaded previously, and we have it in the IP adapter as well. So right here, I'm going to connect the checkpoint models to the IP adapter. And the output of the models from the IP adapter to the case sampler. This is a very typical usage of the IP adapter. Actually, we need to convert this conditions text strength back inside this custom node without having it as an input parameter. So let's go back to convert text to widget and the negative prompt as well. And we can erase all the predefined text. Just leave all of this empty, the conditions here, and we can generate an image using the IP adapter. This will help you understand the difference. As you can see, the output from the IP adapter is almost the same style as the source image, the reference image here. It positions the computer screens, the lighting in the computer room, and even the character's face color, dress, and hairstyles. Everything looks the same, but if we want to be more creative, we can try something different.
we want to use this image as a reference for other stories or purposes. Then, we can use this large language model and connect it with stable diffusions to identify the content of the image. Let's connect it back to the large language model groups. We can test it once more and see completely different styles. while still having the same elements present in the image. For instance, we have characters controlling multiple computers in both images, but they are in completely different styles. The first style is neon punk cyberpunk, while the other one has a character controlling a computer with multiple monitors. Both images contain the same elements, but in different styles. The layout and structure of the images are generated with different structures, allowing us to be more creative and obtain diverse image styles for various purposes. For example, if we want to create cyberpunk-style sci-fi stories, we can do that here. We can also generate different text prompts using the same image, resulting in various styles of images. Even though the generated images include the elements of multiple monitors and female characters, they have different styles. Now let's discuss the text-to-prompt groups. By connecting these groups, you can input text and interact with the large language models. Through your input text prompt, the large language model can generate an image text prompt for stable diffusions. For example, Let's consider a typical use case where you use Clover 3 in PoE to create short sci-fi stories. You can input your text prompt, copy and paste the relevant parts into the larger language model, and transform the storylines and scene descriptions into stable diffusions understandable text prompt. This allows stable diffusions to generate an image that accurately represents your input text. Once you're ready to proceed, you can start Mistral again, load in the Olama, and transform your input text from the large language model text prompt to the stable diffusions text prompt. In this example, the character is standing in front resembling a sci-fi cinematic style. Starting from the storyline of these sci-fi stories, it looks pretty cool. The descriptions provide vivid background details such as helicopters and broken buildings. Now, we can move on to scene 2. Let's rearrange the groups so that everything is visible on one monitor. If you don't like the generated image, you can simply click to generate another image using the same text prompt. For example, this one looks better with a cool side angle shot of a character. When working with stable diffusions, natural language input in full sentences may not always be understood. However, using the text prompt group, you can input natural language descriptions, which is helpful for content creators who want to create a story scene using AI tools like stable diffusions on their local I have added the stable video diffusions group here and organized the diagram by tidying up the other custom nodes. Within the stable video diffusions group, purple groups, I have the output of the sci-fi story I wanted to demonstrate. I can bring this text prompt into the large language model. I don't need to use the image to prompt groups here so I can remove them temporarily Let's enable the text to prompt groups and paste the storyline from Cloud3's response into the large language model. Continuing with the storyline, I can use scene 3, which I've already done, and proceed with the rest of my story. And as you can see, this is a check one more time. I will disable the image to prompt groups. Make sure you connect all these nodes together and click the Generate Text Prompt button. We can start generating the text prompt from the large language model to Stable Diffusions Text Prompt and we have this image generated from our storyline. So mostly I will put this to fix seat numbers for the Stable Diffusions group. Now it's 
passing the image data to the stable video diffusions. As we know, stable video diffusions are very simple to run and use. Just retrieve the initial image, pass it to the stable video diffusions image to video conditioning nodes, and that's all you need to do. I have also resized custom nodes to identify the width and height of the image and pass that to the SVD conditioning as well. Now, we are waiting for the case sampler to generate this scene. Here's the result from the previous image we generated, and it's exactly the same as before. You can see the camera motions of the spaceship behind are moving. If I don't like the direction of the camera panning, I can use the same image. In a typical stable video diffusions workflow, we load the image, connect it to the image reroute node, and then use the same image we just generated on top of the SDXL groups. We bring it down to the SVD groups and generate it again. This allows us to edit or redo the camera motion styles of the videos if we don't like the current one. Let's disable that to prevent loading those data as well. We are only focusing on the SVD groups at the moment. Let's say I don't like this video's output and I want to use the same image to generate another video's output here. Let's see the result. It's a very handy tool. We simply change the reroute direct point from the input image of SDXL and connect it to the load videos node here. Before that, of course, I have to save that image to the load videos node to input this image. So there you go, guys. How amazing is that? It's a streamlined and fast way to create animations from stable video diffusion. You can use ChatGPT or any models to create a storyline and just input that storyline into the Comfy UI workflow. Generate an image and pass it to image to stable video diffusions. I believe lots of you seen many YouTube videos teaching you how to make YouTube shorts or history shorts video using multiple tools. Jumping back and forth, generate storyline in GPT. Bring those contents in Leonardo AI, then Pika Lab. Those uh, typical so-called tutorial videos. But now with just the local machine installed with Olama, large language models, and stable diffusion comfy UI, you can create bring your storyline and just create your animation video in just one workflow. So I hope this inspires you to try it out guys. If you want to create YouTube videos, create short stories, or anything video content that you can leverage large language model and diffusion model to generate, feel free to try this out. You will have a smooth workflow pipeline to create content with this. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye.